your watching gears. Hey, welcome to Gears. We got a great show coming at you today because we're starting off with the one project that almost every do-it-yourselfer is either going to have to deal with or tackle at some time in their life. And I'm talking about replacing carpet and dealing with your interior. Now, it doesn't matter if you've got an old pickup or a classic muscle car or a five-year-old Honda. Nothing wears out like your carpet because that's where you spend all your time and spill your drinks and your coffee. The good news is it's a lot easier to bring your interior back to life than a lot of people think. And that is what we're going to prove to you. The subject that we are working on today is the Banshee. And being a 1995 Mazda Miata means that this is very typical of a lot of the late model projects that are sitting out in garages there right now. I mean, it's still a good car, got a lot of good miles left on it, no rust on it. It's just a little tired in the interior, especially the carpet. So we're gonna fix that. Now, putting in a new carpet is not difficult, but it doesn't just jump in by itself either. No, there are some tricks to help you put this in and make it look right. That's what we're gonna show you. Okay, the first thing you need to do to replace your carpet is get everything out of the way. The seats, the door seals, the console, the seat belts, kick panels, everything. Even the top. At this point, you're gonna be getting a pretty good sized pile of hardware, clips, and fasteners. And it's really easy to get them all mixed up or lose them. Not a good thing. The best way to prevent that is to get yourself a box of Ziploc bags. That way you can bag everything up and mark them so when you're ready for them, they're all there together, ready for you. This is especially important if it's gonna be a while before you put everything back together. Now comes the moment of truth because it's time to get this old carpet out of here. It should come out fairly easily. <laughs> the question is, what are you going to find underneath it? Yeah. Now, with a car that's only about 10 years old, rust should not be an issue, but you won't know until you get in here. What the? Oh, no way. <laughs> oh, check this out, man. A fake fingernail. I told you we were exercising the estrogen out of this car. It was a little bit still down underneath. The scary thing is I bought this car from a guy. Ooh. Ah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Other than the fingernail, there were no more surprises under the carpet or rusty floor pans. The only thing left to do is clean everything up. Now, like I said before, we really lucked out with this car, man. Take a look at the floor. There is no rust on this thing. Now, obviously, if you have rust in the floor, you're gonna have to cut it out and repair it before you can put the new carpet down. But if you just have surface rust, that's a little different thing. You can get a rust inhibitive paint like a Bill Hirsch Miracle Paint or a POR 15 or chassis saver paint. All you gotta do is paint it on. That stuff will stop rust in its tracks. Then, you're going to be ready for your carpet. Let's go take a look. All right. For the new interior, we went to a place called Stock Interiors, got the whole setup for a Mazda Miata. Check this out. This is a form-fitted carpet. You got your foot wells and your cross members. There's the tow board. So this thing should drop right into place and just fit great. Also, notice that the jute padding is already glued right to the carpet, so you don't have to chase that around. And then for the rear shelf, we also got that panel, got the padding in place, got nice finished edges, so this is gonna look great in that car. And the final piece is this vertical panel that goes behind the seats. Now, any time that you are doing a custom carpet installation, you might wanna pick up some extra material and some extra padding because you don't really know when you might need this. Now, if you're putting something in that's gonna create more heat, like a V8, that's when you'd want to use this, because it is not just a padding, it's also a heat shield. Now it's a matter of laying the carpet in and working it to make it fit. Now be prepared to do some pushing and pulling and trimming here.
If you start in the center, slowly work your way out, taking your time to fit all the corners and the edges, you'll have a fantastic looking carpet in no time at all. Okay, the one thing that invariably happens when you're working with a form-fitted carpet is you're gonna find that there's some creases and bends and stuff that don't really match what you're doing. And some people will tell you, oh, yeah, you just mash that in and glue it down, but that's, that's not the way to do that. Here's what you're dealing with. You have got to reform the carpet. And the way to do that is with a heat gun. Now this is not a hair dryer. This is a heat gun. It goes up to a thousand degrees. And all you have to do is just melt the plastic and reform the carpet. Next comes the rear panel. And using the old carpet as a pattern, we'll just trim it up. Get it in place using some 3M adhesive. And that is it, quick and easy. And there is no reason that you can't do this to your vehicle in an afternoon and save yourself some serious money. Now take a look at this, look at the difference. It's like a brand new car. Now once you get the carpet in, all you've got to do is reassemble the interior and you're ready to go down the road with your project. Now with this one, <laughs> I've still got some work to do to this one. Now I know you're wondering about the shifter and the exhaust and things like that. We'll get to that in a minute. Hey, we're back and working on the Banshee, and it's getting closer and closer to being done every day. Now, I've got the engine back in. This gives you a good chance to see just how well that engine fits and how that air cleaner is gonna fit around that hood scoop. <laughs> That's cool. Now, the reason the drivetrain's back in is that we need it to help fit the next components that we're gonna put on, like the shifter. Now we've been getting a lot of questions about the shifter placement on this project, so let's take a look. The new T5 shifter is coming up here, but the stock Miata shifter came up here. So if we're gonna hide all that stuff with a stock console, which we are, we have to move the shifter back and to the right. Here's how we're gonna do it. Now, there's no question, we have got to have a serious shifter for this car. So we went to a place called Purple Hazen because they specialize in performance shifters and wild and crazy shifter stuff too. And we came up with a special gear shifter that's not only gonna be perfect for the Banshee, but for any car that's running a T5 five-speed transmission. Take a look at this. The shifter is precision cut out of billet aluminum, so it's lightweight and strong. This is something you can bang on for years and not damage. Now, of course, it's got a very tight pattern so you can get in and out of the gears quick. And it has the shifting stops, so you can't overshift the transmission and damage it. Then it also comes with different springs that you can change inside that will adjust the tension on the shifter so it will feel the way you want it to feel. Now, for the handle, that's where Purple Hazen started living up to their name. Notice they cut it out of aluminum and it looks very similar to the wheels. That's really cool. But the best part is when you bolt it on the shifter, notice it moves it back and to the right, exactly what we needed. It's gonna come right up in the hole of the console. Now to go with that, we've got us a nice little gears knob. So we have something that we can really grab onto when we're shifting the gears. The best part is this all bolts right in place of the stock shifter. The next thing to go in are the seats. Unfortunately, the rally seats that I was planning on using here are not gonna work because being over six feet tall, once I had them bolted in, I realized I was looking right at the top of the windshield. Not a good thing. So we're gonna have to reuse the stock Miata seats, but that's not a bad thing because remember I said, the stock Miata seat is not a bad seat. Ours were just the wrong color and really nasty. So we took care of that by shipping them off to B&G Incorporated, Nashville, Tennessee, and they reupholstered them for us. Take a look at this. Not only are they black now, so they match, but we changed the look of the upholstery so it matches the look of the car. The best part is, now 
I'm gonna fit in the car. <laughs> At this point, we are ready to deal with the exhaust system. So we hooked up with our buddies at Cherry Bomb, laid out a system for this car. Check it out. Starting with two and a half inch diameter pipe, the head pipes bolt right to the header collectors. Then they bend outside the frame rails up underneath the car. Then we welded on O2 sensor bungs. So if we ever want to add fuel injection, we can. Then of course we have the crossover pipe, which will equalize the pressure of the two cylinder banks. Then we added two Cherry Bomb high flow catalytic converters because we want to pass emissions with this car. Then of course it goes on out. Now one thing that's really important to do on a custom exhaust is to flange all of your connections so you can just unbolt the system whenever you want. Now I know this looks like a lot of wild bends here, but you're going to be surprised how nicely this bolts up underneath there. And there it is. <laughs> yeah. Now, from here on back, we built another couple of pipes that tuck under the rear end, over the cross member, and into the crowning jewels, those Cherry Bomb Vortex mufflers, because they flow like crazy and sound really good. Now, the final touch are these Cherry Bomb polished stainless steel tips. I'm going to weld them right onto the mufflers. They tuck into these little notches that we cut into the body and are just gonna look incredible as this thing rumbles down the road. I can't wait to hear this thing. You know, since we've been touching on the subject of interiors today, now is the perfect time to deal with the biggest problem that you're gonna face when you're doing an interior. It's the wrong color, or it's faded. Now, if we're talking about a carpet, that's not that big a deal, because you just get a new carpet and put it in. But if you're talking about a panel or a dash, oh, that is a whole different deal. Because if you are lucky enough to find a new panel, it's probably gonna be black and really expensive. If you go to a salvage yard, you're gonna get stuff that's probably the wrong color or faded. So you're right back where you started. Now, the best thing to do is to try to refurbish your old panels, provided they're not cracked or broken. Now, I know some of you guys are going, oh no, I am not gonna try that. And that's because most of us in the past have tried to paint these kind of panels only to have the paint flake off in a week or two and you end up with a bigger mess than what you started with. Now, the good news is there is a way to paint this stuff to where it looks good and lasts a long time. That's what we're gonna show you. Okay, the first thing you need to do is get the parts ready to be painted. Any gouges that need to be smoothed, any parts that need to come off, now is the time to do it. The next step, and this is a biggie, you have to prep the panels properly. Most interior panels have years of protectants rubbed into them, and they also had a mold release on them from the factory to help them pop out of the mold. Paint will not stick to any of that, so it's all got to come off, and that takes a serious cleaner. Now, I like to use trisodium phosphate, or TSP for short. You can pick this up at the local hardware store. It's a great heavy-duty, all-purpose cleaner, and it'll do a great job getting all the nasty goo off these panels. Once the panels are clean and dry, we'll give them a good wipe down with a wax and grease remover to make sure that there is absolutely nothing left anywhere on the panel that could prevent good adhesion. That is why this step is important. There's still some stuff on here. Now, the real key 
to getting paint to stick to vinyl or plastic is you have got to use a high quality vinyl paint like this from Duplicolor. Now look at that, that is for vinyl. Now the reason that's important is because vinyl moves, man. It expands, it contracts, and this paint will do the same thing so it won't flake off. Now Duplicolor's got this in all kinds of different colors so you should be able to find some to fit your application. Now wait a minute, before you just start shooting paint on, the first thing you need to put on is an adhesion promoter. Now this is basically a clear, light primer that makes your paint stick like crazy. Finally, you're ready for the paint. And it's very important that you don't just glob on big, heavy coats. Now, two or three light coats are the way to go here. So you not only don't get runs, but you also don't fill up the grain pattern in the plastic. And once it's all dried out, you've got a panel that looks brand new. I mean, check it out. Look at the difference between the one I haven't painted yet. Now, look at these pieces. They look like they came right off of the shelf. And they're durable. This stuff is not going to flake off. Now, when you put it all back together, you can use your protectants on it, and it'll last a good long time. The best part is, this is something that's cheap and easy to do. All you need is some cleaner, some Duplicolor, and a few hours. So now, you have no excuse to have a nasty old interior. Get out there and work on it. Art Spin, brought to you by Cherry Bomb, disturbing the peace since 1968. If there is one thing that will just make you fighting mad, it's when somebody breaks into your car and steals your stuff. That's why there's locks on the doors of most cars. But what about us four-wheel drive guys that drive Jeeps or Broncos or anything with a soft top? Well, you need to invest in one of these toughy security boxes because it's got all metal construction and it bolts to the floor of your rig. So this is not going anywhere. Now on top of that, it has a special hinge system that can't be jimmied, got a heavy duty latch, and a special lock that cannot be jerry-rigged with a pair of vice grips or destroyed with a hammer. So your stuff is safe. Now, what about that stereo that's always getting ripped off? Well, this box even has a place to hide your stereo. So now, you're not gonna lose your tunes. The best part is, it makes a great center console. It even has cup holders. So if you need to protect your valuables when you're out wheeling, Tuffy Security Products has got the box for you. When it comes to building a performance vehicle, most people are really specific on how to build the perfect engine for the project. However, when it comes time to stick an automatic transmission to that engine, well, most people just settle for what's ever on the shelf because you know, that's the only choice you got, right? Wrong. Bowler Performance Transmission specializes in custom building transmissions to match the power output of your engine and also how you're gonna use it, whether you're racing or off-roading or just driving on the street, for example. This is a 727 torque flight, complete with the torque converter, built to handle 850 foot-pounds and 49-inch tall tires. Yeah, but they don't just do Dodges. Chevys, Fords, whatever you send, they'll do it for you. And they'll also custom powder coat it or paint it if you want. So if you are tired of replacing a burned out transmission or having one break on you when you need it the most, you need to give Bowler Performance Transmission a call. There's no doubt that fuel supply and fuel economy are two huge subjects right now. And everybody is looking for that cheap, reliable fuel source to replace this. But what if that fuel source was right under our noses and practically free? Well, the guys at Grease Car think that it is, and here's the proof. This is their kit to convert a diesel pickup to run on used cooking oil. <laughs> I'm talking about the stuff that's out back of KFC that you can get for free, yeah. Now, the kit includes the tank for the oil, then you've got all the hoses, all the lines, the solenoids, the pumps, everything that you're gonna need to run your vehicle on standard diesel fuel, then you push a button and it converts over, runs on the oil in the tank. If you've got a vehicle that has a diesel engine in it, you're in luck because Grease Car probably has a kit to turn it into a grease car. Now, for those of you that are thinking, oh, you know, I don't, how well can that work? Well, you need to keep watching Gears because we're gonna find out.
And now, what are you working on? For today's What Are You Working On, I got something I guarantee you haven't seen before. It comes from Henry Pape, and he decided he wanted to take a snowmobile and build an ultralight sand buggy out of it. Said it was an itch that he wanted to scratch. Well, here's a shot of Henry and his itch. Yeah. Now, the rig runs 110 horsepower snowmobile engine with forward and reverse and the torque converter drive mounted behind the seat and it has full instrumentation and controls, no handlebars anymore, it's got a steering wheel. It's got all the safety gear, the harnesses, and the full roll cage. But what really gets your attention is the suspension. Look at this, man, it's got full long travel, independent suspension, front and rear, and 16 inches of travel because of the King shocks. <laughs> That's a nice setup. Now, does it work? Well, here's a shot of Henry pulling a serious wheelie in the sand, and a shot of him catching some serious air in the sand. Yeah, I'll say it works. The cool thing about this, we're always telling people to get out there, think outside the box. Henry blew the box all to pieces, man. This is a gearhead. Awesome job. Now, the rest of you guys, if you want your vehicle featured on the show, get out there, take some pictures of it, send them into GearsTV.com. We'll see if we can get it on the air. All right, we're out of time for today, which means it's time for you to get out there and start working on something before you get stuck with a honeydew list. She's in the kitchen. Go, go now, quick. <laughs>